in records. Over the past decade, they've been the number one concert draw in the entire continent. Now they got a documentary, some kind of monster it's called, an incredibly candid look inside the world of a rock and roll band. Please welcome Metallica's Lars Ulrich and James Hetfield. <laughs> Lars and James. Right then. Damn. Right. <laughs> 90 million? Is that, that's in, in counting, It must right? be more. Right. It must be more by now. <laughs> I think that was last week. <laughs> so how, you're living legends and you still kick ass. That's not bad, right? Thank you. Yeah. Just, Sounds just familiar. Like, just like you. Got just it. like you, all right. Keep going. You, right? How was that? Uh, <laughs> now, tell, tell, I mean, I, I know a lot of people know this, but some people don't, how this all started, because I know it was the two of you that kick this whole Metallica nuttiness off 20, 25 years ago, right? Yeah. Give us a quick <laughs> little <laughs> history of Metallica. History. Of Metallica. <laughs> um, well, it's been, yeah, like I say, 23 years. I came over from Denmark. You know my dad. Grew His up dad in, is in, Torben Ulrich, by the way, who's the first hippie of tennis. <laughs> the first hippie of tennis. <laughs> and, uh, Do we have a picture of uh, Torben, by any chance? It's we got coming. Some. We got it. It's coming. Quick. There he is. Yeah. Okay. There's Pops. All right. And he's, and he's lefty. He's absolute lefty. All right. Now, now, and you went to Balateri's, which is like the tennis, where all the prison. tennis players, share, yeah. prison. Is, yeah. he, <laughs> oh, excuse me, camp. Sharon uh, Hover, who won right. Wimbledon, went there, the latest yeah. one. But go ahead. But I, I grew up on the tennis, turkey, the tennis circuit. And so uh, the idea was for me to come over and kind of play tennis in Los Angeles <laughs> after I finished school. Oh, you know? oh there it is. <laughs> Who's she? You guys are really <laughs> digging in here. Um, to come and, and play tennis in Los Angeles after I finished school in Denmark. And um, that lasted about a half an hour. And um, I got kind of bored with that. And then I wanted to form a rock and roll band. And so I put an ad in the Recycler, which is kind of the sort of, you know, 7-Eleven kind of buy used cars and musicians looking for other musicians and all that type of stuff. And then me and James met up. And um, 23 years buy later, we're on... Buy a used musician. <laughs> <laughs> and 23 years later, we're on your talk show. Second day, There you go. Yes. That was the short version. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming, James, you didn't come from a sports background. Is that, is that a correct assumption? You're a big guy, actually. You're well, people, you're about, what, 6'2 no, or 6? I loved sports growing up. Uh, huge Oakland Raider fan, uh, even though I grew up in L.A. But anyway, uh, I played football for one season in high school, and then I discovered music. My hair got long. It went past the helmet, so <laughs> I had to make a big life choice at that point <laughs> I, I think music football and I, I i chose football and no <laughs> i chose music and i'm very grateful how does it feel uh, for example that uh when this whole thing in iraq for this, you know this war and I, I i i swear to god you hear these soldiers half of them or more they're playing before they go out to to go out in the battlefield mm -hmm. they say they're playing metallica music I mean, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, we hear that a lot also with a lot of sports teams and stuff like that, that they warm up and do all their thing to Metallica. It's awesome. And look, anybody that gets anything out of what we do is obviously a great thing. We don't think so much when we make the music about how people are going to react to it. We just try and kind of do our thing with it, and then you sort of let it go, and then people can kind of take it from there. And, but I'm proud of, of anybody who gets off on it. You know, I used to warm up to your music. Did you know that? No, <laughs> you never told me that. <laughs> Towards the end, when, uh, no. <laughs> you know the anger right. thing. You know, you think that could have contributed to some of me getting a little pissed you off at some people. You were such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault, right? We, uh, yeah. <laughs> But we, but we used to watch footage of you about, before how, how we about, record a record. <laughs> 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 Touche. All right, hold on. We come back more with Lars and James, plus a look at their new movie. Don't go away. Don't go away. I play drums a lot. Playing part, being in the room, and then mainly being in the room with Lars, playing music.
music together. I guess I had higher expectations, and I don't know, maybe I'm disappointed in myself. Maybe, I don't know. Wanna talk about that? I mean, what does that mean? I'm not enjoying being in the room with you playing. <laughs> All right, we're back with Metallica's Lars Ulrich and James Hetfield. Now, this movie, this is, I mean, it's a, first of all, it's a great movie. I mean, I highly recommend people go see it, but who are you, obviously the Metallica fans are going to check this out, right? I mean, are you, are you looking to make, you know, go for the really big, you're not big enough yet, I guess. You sold 100 million records. <laughs> right, when we get or, to the 100 Or the million. more important question, why in the hell did you do this? Is if, when people see this, they'll know why, because you really open yourself up here. Big time. Pure insanity, I think. And uh, well, I think we, we didn't think the thing just happened. And uh, the, the cameras were there. We started going through traumatic things in our lives. It, what a great gift that was to have cameras rolling during huge parts in your life. Not many people get that. And we get to learn a lot about ourselves from that. And why not put that out? Why not show the other extreme of Metallica. They've seen the mighty, staunch Metallica, you know, <laughs> save the world or whatever it is. This is the... Uh, destroy you know, it. Destroy, destroy the, the world. world. Yeah. <laughs> destroy the world by saving it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is the other side. This is the broken, lost, Let's show confused. a clip first so some people get an idea. We got a couple clips. Let's show this first one. I mean, we're in <laughs> moods and we're not going to get All we want to do is pick up fight and I don't want to pick a fight <laughs> this is so silly you're just sitting there going I'm in a really pissy mood and, and I fucking told you straight up that I was right and what are you trying to do I'm not trying to do fucking shit. you're just sitting here being a complete dick <laughs> you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh why don't we recreate that you want to, that's a normal day at my house. But, <laughs> but wow. it didn't look like you guys were uh, getting along too well at that point. I think that's pretty early no. on in the movie. And James, I mean, obviously we can reveal this. You left about three, four months into this filming and went to rehab for, I believe, over a year. Tell us, tell us about that. Well, because uh, Lars didn't look too happy about it. Just well, there was, Lars, there was, Lars there was, wasn't too happy. Right. Well. <laughs> There was certainly a point where, uh, you know, I was desperate enough that I had to go away and take care of stuff. Uh, you know, I had gotten thrown out of the house at home. My behavior from the road came home, and I started, it started to disintegrate my family. And my wife, the strong woman that she was, she stood up, threw me out of the house, and said, get some help. And that scared me enough. And the band wasn't going well. Everything, like, it felt like the rug was pulled out from under me, and everything that I had solid in my life was no longer there. I knew I had to do something and rehab st stripped me down to the soul and built, built me back up. And as you said, yeah, I know there were some difficult times for these guys and it must have been tough that, you know, a path that I was taking for myself of complete uncertainty involved their future too. I, I think we have a clip relating to that very thing. So let's, let's move to this next one. You know, we haven't really worked together for almost nine months. When we were talking a couple of days ago about whether, you know, if we wanted to do this film or not, I was wondering if having these guys in here would affect that. Because I'm just, there's an intimacy that you get when it's just a few people in the room, and I'm just wondering if that's going to get lost, if we're going to go back to sort of like battling each other and trying to be like all strong and what intimacy what the f you done <laughs> <laughs> so you guys considered yourself uh obviously we're close but there was like you were growing apart like a marriage so to speak yeah, right? but who was that guy that that guy that was phil i think his name he's phil, the, yeah, he's yeah. a therapist or i guess you call a coach therapist you brought in to try to help was, things yeah, out he, he he's a ref. yeah he spent a lot of time with uh working actually with sports teams and kind of getting everybody on a sports team to kind of get along, to be in sync and all that type of stuff. And so when we realized after 20 years that we really didn't know, it's just pretty evident uh, how to communicate <laughs> and how to sort of like respect each other and, and, and kind of all that stuff, it was just tearing us apart. He came in and, and 
and helped us learn all that stuff for the first time. And we kind of realized after a while that we barely knew each other, even though... Is that true? And you actually I, barely I knew each other? I think it's pretty I mean, true. That's, that's yeah. a pretty heavy thing to say, right? Well, we knew each other en uh, enough to get along. And I think we were afraid to get to know each other more and investigate why we are who we are. And, uh, and uh, now we know too much. No? <laughs> <laughs> you're st and, and you're still clean? You're yeah. still clean and sober? I took a shower this morning. Yeah. <laughs> three oh. years, three years this month. Yeah. This guy, yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from being around him for the last three years, he's the poster child for that whole thing working. I'm so proud of him. W what's your status as far as that goes? I'm the poster child for living my life the way I choose to live <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> he's um, before. <laughs> He's still doing the Metallica thing. Yeah, somebody's got to hold it. I got that one. I have one bone. I have one bone to pick with you, though, because uh -oh. uh, during that movie, I noticed that at one point you sold some art. Yes, um, I did. At Christie's and made. I'm not even going to tell you how many millions of it you, you made, but if you go see the movie, you'll see this guy made a ton of money. And one of the, or do a couple. You feel that you're not credited enough for well, introducing me to Jean Michel Basquiat, or is that is that where you this read is going? right through me? Okay, is that what this? <laughs> Every time I see John, it's always within a couple beers times, it always comes up that I never give you enough credit for introducing me to Jean-Michel Basquiat. So I'll do it right now. John? You made millions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> a little compensation. So, uh, tomorrow, yeah, a little compensation. tomorrow night will be on me. Okay? What is it, tomorrow like 50 will be... percent or what is it? <laughs> So you guys are still in the midst of a, t uh, of a tour, right? I mean, you just yeah. finished a tour in Europe. Tell we us. We just came back from Iceland. We, we ended up, we were six weeks in Europe, ended up in Iceland uh, three days ago. Came um, over here two days ago doing this for a couple days uh, about this movie. And then uh, we go back on the road and keep going in America till Thanksgiving. I, I got a question for you, James. Did you ever, because uh, this is an inside question, I guess, and since I've seen it, but have you ever talked with Dave, uh, the original g guitar players? Because Lars met with, uh, is Dave Mustang, right? Yeah. yeah. Have, have you met, because he looked pretty upset about it. I mean, hopefully people will see this and, yeah. you know, tell me what your status is with him, because that seemed very heavy. That, that was a heavy scene. I was away in rehab at that point. And, uh, you know, coming together and talking with Dave, I'm sure will happen at one point. Uh, I certainly wasn't ready then. Uh, you know, we, we share a lot. <laughs> we share a lot of struggles. And uh, it was evident in that scene. So uh, yeah, he st still struggles with stuff, and and I'd love to get together and talk with him about that for sure. Can I thank you guys a lot for coming to my second show? I yes, really honor, appreciate it. All right, Lars and James from Metallica. We're going to eat at a very expensive, expensive restaurant tomorrow. When we come back, Ralph Nader, but first this.